Hey guys, today's YouTube Rewind is a real-time video. This is amazing. It's with precision applicators doing a glitter press all in real time. See the action, check this video out. It's a good one, hope you enjoy it. So we're just going through, we always want to make sure that we're really kind of pushing those cuticles back. We're not getting aggressive with it. We are just making sure that we don't do their nails and then it look like they need a fill already. Plus this will help with any lifting if we're making sure we're getting any of that excess protein growth off. So let's switch out to our medium sanding band and get you prepped. So I already seasoned this. Something I kind of do prior to the client getting there as I'm switching my bits out and getting ready for their appointment is I'll season my hand files. Usually I season my hand files when I first get the box if I have time. That way I never forget. And I season the arbor band on a file real quick so we can really tuck up and get in those grooves without cutting them. Move the shine. So a lot of people, this is where I find that they have lifting issues is that they feel like they're really tucked up in that cuticle area. We've got a little cut we'll try to stay out of. Um, but they're not. Like, they'll show us. I'm like, mm, you're almost there, but not quite. So, if, Steph, how do you feel it right on the cuticle? Go ahead and turn that way a little bit. I can feel the bit against my cuticle, but it doesn't feel doesn't like hurt. it doesn't hurt or yeah. anything. Right, right. So and I am really just tucking up, letting it glide through there. What I'm not doing is I'm not angling the bit down. We're keeping it flat so it tucks in there without creating any grooves. I think we've all seen that, like rings of fire from just bad bit placement. The minute you angle it, go around the world, the minute you angle it up, we're gonna leave red rings. And it's like a, a tree. Let's see how many fills you've had. <laughs> oh, you've had a lot. So we want to make sure we keep it fairly flat. All the way through. Just removing that shine. We're not overthinking it. Make sure we get it all off. Let's switch out to our swipe. So do we have any questions today? Um, I had a question yesterday that someone had asked if over prepping could cause to lift absolutely the thinner the nail is the um the more chance the product's not going to want to stick to it i mean the healthier the nails like wow no product just love, especially gel just loves to stick to it so yeah if you go a little crazy and um you can start thinning that nail plate down and you can start running into lifting issues definitely would you agree? Yes. She's like, no. <laughs> well, and um, her steps did sound a bit um, over, like a little bit of overkill. And okay. I was like, and I mean, and even on top of that, you're probably taking three times as much time as right. was really necessary. Yeah. And that's, that's where we kill our speed. Our timing is we will go through, I don't know what she's doing, but I've seen, well, myself, for instance, I used to go through and I would shape everything prior. Then I would take my file and I would kind of prep that way because I wasn't really confident with the electric file. And then I would pull out the electric file and kind of prep that way. And then I probably would go back and reprep with a hand file. Let's do this twice, almost, almost <laughs> forgot. I would have been praying. <laughs> have you ever done that with clients? Like forget a step, like protein bond twice. You're like, oh dear Lord. Please let them come back yeah. <laughs> with nails on. When I first got out of school, we used primer back then. And they didn't let us use primer in school. I think one time we got to use primer. So you get in these practice modes. And <laughs> when I went into salon, I would start doing the nails. And as they're walking out the door, I'm like, I didn't prime their nails. Because mm -hmm. I wasn't used to doing it. 
and oh, that's that that really sucked, people. <laughs> yeah, that kind of goes Not gonna to lie. Like your speed technique of autopilot. Autopilot, yeah. Because if you're just used to doing something one way, then it's it becomes habit before you even realize it. Yep. So if you just always practice the correct way, like even when we're working on a practice hand, still push the cuticles we back. We literally like, push on Sally, yeah. the fake hand. We literally. I know she has no cuticle growth. So guys, I know that she has a square nail on this one that I usually have to cut. Speed technique for me is I used to, when I'd have downtime, I would sit and do, cut a bunch up, put it back on the wax paper, that put it in my drawer. That way when I came across a square nail, I wasn't literally having to cut it in front of the client. It's just, I know it only takes two seconds if you have to do it, but anytime you can prep ahead, like, like I was talking about seizing the files or cutting square forms for those just in case moments, anytime you can do something like that, it's, it's gonna, it's gonna help with your timing. So. It may just be like a second here and there, but five seconds overall. It adds you know? up. Yeah. It adds up. And if you have to do it several times through the day, and plus you're, you're searching for the scissors and you swear that people are stealing your stuff and it probably, you just stuck it in the wrong spot and <laughs> all these things. Whereas if you just have it done, you're good to go. Okay. Let's check you out. Did I get these on straight today? The first time that mm -hmm. would be. A miracle and a half. Let's go ahead and relax. Cool. So we're just checking out. I know this is costing me a little time, but it's going to save me time in the long run because she's not going to have crooked nails that I'm trying to fix. Okay. So we're going to grab our concealer pink and I'm just going to get that on her nail. Add it to the front, secure it to the sides, and then we'll bring it out and extend her length. I know that I think the picture we're kind of going off of is coffin, but I really don't like that shape on you. <laughs> I was going to say, you so, just like vetoed that. I, I totally <laughs> did. I don't even care what my client said. I <laughs> totally went, nope, not listening. I'll get through the appointment and go, oh, that's right. You wanted coffin. Oh, I forgot. That's too bad. Next time. So we're just... Making sure we're kind of attached to the sides, not overthinking it. I have to go back through with base. Now you could go base first guys. Um, for me, I like to base second because that's going to anchor this free edge down. When I go to pull those forms off, I'm less likely to rip it. Um, so if I do it this way, I feel like I'm kind of a, doing something that'll save me time. That way I don't break anything. And if I'm gonna, I will be the one to break it. It's not like your acrylic extension where it's nice and hard and everything's down and you can just rip that form off. It's fragile at this state. You're just creating a guideline for everything else. So, make sure I'm not turning you. See that we're not perfect. Get that nice and tight in there. And we're gonna just bring it out. Make sure I'm in the middle of the camera. So we had kind of a perfect storm as we call it. The other day we did some filming <laughs> and I was off screen. I wasn't centered. Hubby hit my shoulder about 20,000 times because my shoulder was in the way. And then something happened with the footage on top of it. So <laughs> it, we're trying not to repeat. It was not meant to be that day. It was not. It was a practice run. Mm -hmm. The nails look good though. <laughs> go ahead and go in the light. So I like to form the hand I have a hold of, then I get product on it. The reason I like to do this is if your client has product on the form, they're less likely to mess it up. If you just form all 10 fingers, you probably are gonna end up with a hand that they give you back that's all jacked up, which is gonna cost you time and it's gonna cost you money. A square one going on here too, um, which is no good. So I form that hand, I get product on. Now she's going to be a lot more careful because there's product on it. Um, and we can move on to this hand, get it formed out. 
I've ran into speed troubles with gel in particular because sometimes my client then wants to look at their hand and do some things <laughs> and it starts falling because gel is, you know, it, it moves. It moves. <laughs> So what would you recommend someone do in that situation? Slap their client? No. Don't do that. <laughs> that means when I have a heart attack. Um, you just have to explain, right? It's, it's all about communication. Don't sit there and hold it all in and get all angry at them and let them mess it up. Say, oh, listen, you know, gel is very, it moves a lot. They, they won't understand self-leveling. Like, yeah. gel moves a lot. So if you just put it in the light, it's going to freeze it. Um, I know that you got to... You want to see, but I'll let you see them at the end and make sure everything's good. Um, but if it moves, I'm not going to fix it. Yeah. <laughs> For I mean, honestly, that is that truly is what I would usually say to clients after explaining to them why and what it was doing. Yeah, like you get one time free. Yeah, because yeah. then that totally, you know, when they come out of the light and their nails point in the other way, you're like, that wasn't how I left this you. One, let's go ahead and get the base on this one so it's curing out. Yeah, that's not how I left you. I don't recall. <laughs> I don't recall that being a thing when uh, I did your nails. Uh, yeah, so I think it's just communication. And you know what? I'm probably the worst of them all. Greg hates probably working on me because I'm constantly... I have to look away. Mm -hmm. And that way I don't try to help. I don't, I'm not looking at him. I'm not in his way. Um, so I, I get it. They, they want to be a part of it. They're like, I'm paying for these. I want to see what's going on, but... I think at that point, you got to explain to them, like, it's more important that I see what's going on and you follow direction. Yeah. So again, guys, even with the tube gels, we got to use that base because base doesn't get floated on. We're kind of pushing it right into that nail bed, making sure everything's nice and secure. Go ahead and go in. Um, so we still use a brush for that, but real quickly. Base is kind of like your foundation to everything. It's what's I'm gonna make sure everything stays nice and tight. That with a protein bond, you're gonna have no lifting. If someone wanted to, can they use the brush with the tube gels? Absolutely, if they so desired. Rather than just applying with the applicator? Yeah, it's just, if you find it faster, I know some people like to just like, they put a dollop, I don't know if that's really a word. Um, I'm pretty sure it is. Okay. Uh, uh, gel on, and then they move it with the brush, and it's faster for them that way. Again, you don't have to do exactly what we're doing. The minute that you're on automatic pilot and you're moving as fast as possible, that's your speed. That's, that's when you have it right. There's a lot of ways of doing all kinds of nails. So um, we show you what works fastest for us, and then you take it, you practice it, and you tweak it. So that would be my advice on that. Practice, practice, practice for sure. And nothing is going to be fast. Mm -hmm. That was nice. Let's fix this one that I messed up. Stuck my finger in. I'm not sure where I stuck my finger in, but we'll fix it anyway. Okay. Um, I was just talking to Greg because he's doing some like golf lessons. And he's getting really frustrated because he's learning new techniques. Yeah. And it's, he's getting, you know, he's kind of like, I played worse today. But anything you learn to make yourself better that you're not familiar with, it you're going to, it takes time. You're going to go slower and you're going to feel like you're going backwards. But then all of a sudden it's going to hit and you're going to be like, okay, there it is. It's like uh, riding a bike is faster than walking, but not at first. Right do a lot of falling well and like you were saying to practice techniques that work for you even if you take a class from 10 different educators that all are young males educators you learn different techniques in each one yeah we speak the same language yeah we have similar very similar techniques but we have twists on it like I used to use the back of the brush for for my gel I'm putting away the gel and I should not be putting away the gel okay let's get some product on here I hear Gucci. She's like a bull in a china shop. So Steph's dog's here today. <laughs> making sure we all are getting our work done. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was flying up those stairs. Yeah. To exercise. At least one of us was getting it today. 
Okay, I'm just pushing out. And the more I need, the more I push. What I want, got what I need, I stop. Push Do you feel like it's faster for you to apply to one to two fingers at a time? It really depends on the room temperature. Today, it's starting to get a little toasty, so I'm probably just gonna have you freeze. We'll put the base on this one so it's getting nice and cured out. And um, it just depends. Sometimes I can do multiple and sometimes I can't. So it will depend on you and the room temperature for the day. So it's kind of the opposite. When um, it heats up, acrylic is like working with cement. And when it gets cold, your acrylic runs. It's the opposite for gel. When it heats up, gel gets really, really runny. And when it's cold, it gets really, really thick. So I'm not wasting any time by going back and forth because I'm always in motion. And I forgot to take your forms off. All good. Sometimes I will get the first layer on before I do this. As long as you do that final cure with no forms on. But if you're working with white guys, don't don't leave the forms on. You got to take them off. Why? White is very very pigmented, so it gel cures from the top, the bottom, sideways, inside, all the way through, and it needs to be able to hit that bottom. And if you don't hit that bottom, you're going to be in trouble with your white. I call it, this is really gross, sorry guys. I call it the zit effect. Mm. <laughs> so it's like hard on the top and gooey in the middle. And that's not good when you're working with gel. <laughs> sorry, kind of gross. But it's a good explanation of it. <laughs> yeah, like it's not wrong. But yeah. yeah, it's pretty disgusting. It's pretty disgusting. But people are like, oh yeah, I've had that. And mm -hmm. like, yeah, because your mm -hmm. white was not cured. So we're just holding that finger down too, guys. That lets that gravity really flow it down and that way gravity's working for me not against me sorry Habib I hope I'm not in the way I was leaning I felt it <laughs> I have a tendency to lean on my right shoulder and that gets in Habib's way at um, the camera well and that's poor body ergonomics overall yeah I know that's probably why that shoulder's tweaked yeah <laughs> You have to have that tape stuff like Patty. Oh, yeah. She's all bandaged up. She says it works, though. It's way better than I used to be. I used to be like... I worked with a table that was too wide at first. And so I'd be sitting on my legs. I was young back then. I could do stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And halfway across the table... Ooh, guess what? We get to see what happens when that happens. And boom, got that off. We are going to put the form on. So I broke the tip and nails, 99% of doing nails is knowing what to do when you make a mistake. So remember, this isn't about strength right there. This is just about a guide for me to work off of. So I'm gonna add some more. And we're just gonna extend it again. It's a little wide, but I don't care as long as that side's fixed. That's all that matters to me. Go ahead and get it in. And we're just gonna keep working. And the gel sticks to itself just fine. Yeah, because we did not remove the sticky. So I have run up, come across people who did not know that you're supposed to leave it sticky all the way through. And they're like wiping the dispersion layer off. And gel does not like to stick to a slick, non-sticky surface. So you guys got to leave it sticky. Just leave it sticky all the way through until you're ready to file. That's when we're going to remove that sticky. <laughs> that tip is funny. <laughs> okay, go ahead. And we're going to leave that form on while we do these. Sure, in film. Doesn't help if we're filming and you guys can't see what I'm doing. And all the way through, drop it down. And check the side. That is our most important view. Is 
so wonky today. But it's okay. It'll file out. I'm kind of just checking through and making sure there's enough product on the other ones as I'm going. Just keep on. Ooh, someone's hungry. <laughs> I'm actually starving myself. And all the way through. I call this the Dairy Queen whip. <laughs> it's like soft serve. You're just building it up and then whipping it out. That makes sense. I feel like with the tubes, I've actually got less bubbles from the gel. Oh, yeah, because you're constantly pulling it out. Yeah. Jeez. Oh, I'm not having a good day, <laughs> but that's life. It is life. I was just trying to clean a little bit up off her skin, and then I messed it up. Cool. Yeah. That's what we have the A file for. Yeah, that is what we have it for. First nails of the day is always the hardest nails of the day. Get in it. And all the way through. Hold it down. The minute you start feel like it's flowing, try not to hold it too much down on camera. Like if I was in salon, I literally would have it like this but I know you guys can't see that way. So I try to hold it up a little bit for you guys and I can run into my own issues that way, but that's okay. We'll deal with them in the electric file. And there we go. Make sure we're in screen. Okay. I'm gonna really be more careful with this one. I'm gonna be a little more precise because she does have a little hangnail cut and I want to not have any problems with that and really not have to take my file in there too much. So I'm really trying to be careful right there. Go ahead and stick it in. There we go. And then we'll add more to it. So and if you notice, I don't ever really remove hangnails unless it's a major hangnail prior to their appointment before I do the nails because if you cut a hangnail and then file you're more than likely going to make them bleed so if you leave it and then deal with it ooh, you have texture um, if you deal with it later you'll be it'll be you'll probably won't have any problems that way if you do cut it first though be more there's a 99% chance you're probably going to cut them okay. Let's double check these. We're just adding right where I think we might need some more. This one was the one I messed up. So we're definitely, and guys, I just don't care that this is bumpy and lumpy because as long as I have enough product on her nail plate, I have room to file. That's really all I care about. The bumps, the lumps, sitting here and trying to make it pretty and precise it's just going to cost me time. Go ahead and go in. And this one we should be able to remove and not break. Yay! Let's get this on. In there. There we go. I'm going to hold you down a little bit more on this one since it's already wide. I am going to point it down more and that way it won't even more than what I got <laughs> so what else we got so we are we just hit 500,000 on Instagram which is awesome and by the time they see this they probably we've probably already done the contest mm-hmm I'm going and your thumb let's add a little bit more Again, I'm spending a little more time adding, adding to this one. That way I don't make it nice and bulky or not so bulky that I have to do a ton of filing and worry about getting into that cut. Good. And let's cure that one out. And let's put this one on. So when you're doing just back and forth, 
Are you doing a full cure time or are you just... No, I'm not. Um, because all I care about... Go ahead and turn. All I care about is that it's frozen so I can add more. So people, I have seen people who will take their time and they cure each layer out. In fact, I was one of these guilty parties. Uh, I thought you had to cure each layer for a full, well, back in the day, it was uh, UV. So mm -hmm. it was two minutes. Yeah. <laughs> so much time wasted. Um, so really what we're gonna do with this is like, because I do want to add it more, we're gonna let it sit for about 10 seconds. It's gonna harden the product, freeze it, and then um, I can add more. And that's runs into no problems. So the final is the only time that you need a full cure? Final cure, yep. Yeah, I don't know. And base, base doesn't need a final one minute cure either. Base is about, sorry, I think I'm off the screen a little bit. Shh, Gucci. Good, and your thumbs are a little flatter, so I'm always constantly making sure we kind of that. Good, let's cure out. We've been one minute on that one, let's yep. go and pull. Swipe you clean and file you out and see what we got. So move that dispersion layer. That. Could you file right onto the dispersion layer without removing it? I don't recommend it um, <laughs> because that dispersion layer is sticky and it's just going to clog your bits. Oh, we are dealing with gel, so guess what? We're going to use. Thank you. One of these today. A little dust extractor that Greg was so kind to set us up with. So. Let's see how it works. I am so sound sensitive, but this one's pretty quiet. So I think, I think I'll make it through. So we're gonna switch out to our coarse cross cut or safety bit and we're gonna file. Is the shoulder okay, Heavy? Yes. He's so quiet today. Really I kind of like filming. <laughs> So I prefer to use my electric file before the hand file. That way I'm not picking up things twice. I'm only doing it once. That really saved me so much time because I used to use my hand file on the free edge mm -hmm. when I was doing like a fill or something. I would just kind of shape them up as I was going. And then I think you said that and I realized that I was doing it more times than necessary and it was just... Yeah, an extra step, right? Yeah. Now, some people like it. They like to kind of get that guideline in. They don't like cleaning up with their the sides with their electric file and there's nothing wrong with it. but. If you can skip, try it once. Like skip the step, the step, and see if it made a difference. Like you have to shape in the end anyway. So if you don't have to do the step twice, this one step and way too long. If you don't have to do that step twice, take it out. I think a lot of it is that it's like this is how we were taught. This is what I know, so I can't switch it. And you can. And it's gonna be awkward at first, and it may not be completely faster at first, but if you do it, it'll be good to go. Just mess up off a little bit. This does help a lot. Doesn't look like it's snowing. Did I stick my finger in today? Two? Two. I think I'm off with one hand long and one hand short. Yeah. I'm like off balance. But it's, it's a reality. long life though. Yeah. It is a long life. I'm just looking down that barrel, seeing what else needs to be kind of blended in. 
try to blend in that back area as much as possible. Kind of get the shaping on the sides. Yeah, I like it. All the way through. This actually, this dust extractor helps keep me in center. Because mm -hmm. I know if I'm on top of it, then I'm good. Dust myself off. Table towels are great for that. There we go. About how much uh, percent of your filing do you feel like you do with your electric file? Quite a bit. I do a lot of refining with the, the hand file. Um, I try to get like 90% with the electric file. You don't want to have to work your shoulders so much, especially me. I have the carpal tunnel on both wrists, so I try to... And it'll look like I'm doing a lot of filing with the hand filing, but it, uh, most of it's just like refining. It's a very light touch, so everything's blending in. It's like woodworking. You gotta, you gotta blend everything in. That's pretty. <laughs> That's a special now right there. This is the fun part with my clients. They would be like, what are you doing? Especially when I went from like being precise. Let me turn a little bit more that way. And that's another thing, guys. If, if your client isn't sitting where you need them, just have them twist a little bit. It's a little more of her twisting in these videos because I have to stay in frame. Um, but just have a move. Don't try to work all awkward hurting yourself. They're not going to care. I forgot what I was talking about prior. Um, all good. If it was important, comment and I'll answer. Oh, this when you went from working precise. Oh yeah, tripped them out because I would spend, I would spend forever. I would spend 20, 30 minutes on prep. I would, everything was done. It had to be nice and even, even though I was applying too much product to the nail to do it. So then I had to file still a lot because now I have a two by four. It was a beautiful flat two by four, but <laughs> it was a two by four. Um, so now I've, I've created extra work for myself. So I started doing this technique and it, they were like, they thought I, they thought I had lost my ever loving mind. Plus on top of that, not only was I making a mess, but I went from not forming, always using tips, to forming. And then I went from not using electric file to using electric file. I mean, so yeah, they were just like, what is going on? Um, but after they got used to it, it kind of was fun. They were like, what are you going to do with this mess? Mm -hmm. It's like the bigger reveal, you know? Yeah. Like, oh, it's kind of cool. the one I stuck my finger into. Hey, both pointer fingers. I was consistent. And this is the one I broke, so we're going to make sure she doesn't have a lip underneath. No, she's good. Um, but again, doing the nails is like, okay, I made a mistake. I broke the tip. What am I going to do? Am I going to stare at it and hope that somehow, magically, a unicorn's going to come out and fix it for me? Mm -hmm. Or am I just going to do what I know I need to do, which is throw a form back on there and add the product. It's going to be nice and strong. Your client may question it. And what I always told my client was, uh, it just looked at me funny. It's not a big deal. They won't even remember what nail you did it on at the end. Unless, unless you make it a big deal. If you make it a big deal, then they're going to obsess obsessed about that nail and I guarantee by the time they come back that nail will be off and gone and they'll be like see that's the nail that you broke remember it's that one spot is just a guideline 
it's not, it's not, um, it's not my strength. So she has a little pop bubble in the center where I need a little more product. I'm just going to fill it. She's going to stick it in light and we're going to work on the other hand. Okay, my seat just went down. That was weird. <laughs> Apparently I'm pushing buttons. Get our sidewalls done. I've already seasoned that file, so we're making sure we don't cut our client because that will cost us time and possibly the client. <laughs> I mean, it happens, right? I mean, especially when you're first starting out. It's a I, uh, serious thing. It is. Oh my gosh. Talk about your just heart dropping. Just makes you. And most clients are pretty cool about it, but... Yeah, as long as you don't make it a habit, you're fine. Yeah, <laughs> it's accidental. Don't. It happens, and, you know, usually you feel terrible, but if you're yeah. cutting everybody every time, you might have a problem. Yeah, you might want to reevaluate what you're doing. <laughs> but... Then... Not, not the end of the world. Just try to get better. Pulling back that skin on the side so we can get it nice and tight. Now I know a lot of questions or a lot of comments happen when I'm forming the nail out and people are stressed that I'm not hitting the sidewalls enough. By the time I get the product on top, everything's nice and tight with those sides. I don't overthink it while I'm forming, but as long as when I apply that product over the top, we're good. That's all I care about. Do you feel like you cost any extra time doing different shapes, like coffin versus stiletto? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, we definitely. That's why we charge more. It takes more time to do a custom shape. Make sure everything's nice and tight and secure, and that shaping is just on point. This one's still too long. Um, that's why I definitely charge more. You may have to book out a little bit more time. Uh, you'll know that yourself and like if, if, if this was like full on like full stilettos yeah I'd probably look out an hour and a half versus an hour uh, but and that's so that's why you have, you have to charge more for it if it's costing you more time or more energy because I think sometimes that's where people kind of have a hard time with me it's I'm still booking on the hour but I'm charging more I would charge more for the shape it's like yes I can do it fast but it still costs me more product because it's longer more energy more filing more more everything so you want a custom look you pay a custom price helps if I hold on When I turn and I'm looking at the side, what I'm actually looking for is the other side of the nail. If I see the other side of her nail dropped down, I need to file more on that side and bring it up. And that's really common when you're working with a, like a stiletto shape or something like that. Because you have to bring those side walls up and tight. else we got going on any other questions from the last videos any comments um i think we've kind of covered a lot of them i think the shaping on the sides that was a good point i'm gonna slow my roll on this because remember she has that little hang nail i'm gonna slow it which p.s the hang nail was opening boxes yesterday <laughs> 
so that was not due to any mail service in case anyone was concerned. Yeah, we had to unpack from the Fenty show. Well, I say we. Steph had to unpack from the Fenty show. There's a lot of boxes. We take a lot of product with us because we don't know what we're doing. So we have to take a bunch of product and when we come back, we have to, if we didn't use it, obviously we put it back. But, so she has to go. What is there, four suitcases for? Four and a half. Yeah. That little one was small. I like it. Okay, okay. let's see this one that we added more on to. So if you guys see that I didn't even bother finishing out the nail because I knew she needed product there. So just stop what I'm doing. And move on. And you have a little pin hole from a bubble. It's not a big deal. It's not gonna cause any problems because we're actually doing a glitter on top of that. that these are the same length in a second. I like to get through most of the filing first before I start comparing. That was a time saver too. If you like compare it first, then file, then compare yeah, a second time. Yeah, you're just redoing things over and over and over again. So this way you're only doing it once. And you, once you're used to doing nails, you kind of get a really good idea of like like that middle finger over there. I knew I made that too long. I could see it. So it was fine. You kind of get an idea though of the length you're, you're extending on the form. So it's not usually too far off. You get much better eyeballing it once you've been at it for a while. Yeah. Sharp will definitely be declining. <laughs> what would you call this shape? I call it almond. Like a, a long almond? I don't know. What would you call it? Same. Not really a stiletto. Not really a true almond. Almanetto. Almanetto. I used to have clients bring in photos, especially now I feel like there's so many variations of custom shapes that, you know, even amongst coffin, there could be like a tapered square or a narrow coffin or whatever. So I used to have them bring in reference photos of the shape that they liked. Yeah. Also along with the design, obviously. Well, and everybody calls things differently. Exactly. And I, you know, if you came in and asked me for a set of stilettos, I'm going to do a set of stilettos. And then they're like, oh no, I didn't want long ones. And I'm like, well... <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> my favorite, right? Like, I want um, short stilettos. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you want chiclets. Little vampire teeth. Little vampire teeth. Yeah. But they see the stiletto, they love it, but they know they can't wear their nails that long. Right. But they don't get the concept that, like, certain lengths, certain shape has to have a certain amount of length to it. Right. And they're going to be really bummed that they paid extra for a stiletto. <laughs> <laughs> when they didn't want it in the first place. This one is trying to FaceTime me. There's only one person that tries to FaceTime me. That's a me. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he's not trying to FaceTime me. Maybe he's curious. He's like, you're right, who is it? <laughs> You can 
see, like the shaping, it, it just takes time to to really get it where you want it. Yeah, and you don't want to leave it a little wonky because yeah. I used to always say that if I didn't want to wear it, I wasn't going to leave it on my clients. Right, and that's how I dictate, like, uh, if I like a set. Would I pay for it? Yeah. Maybe not my prices. <laughs> but I do that with the students in uh, OWC, too. They're like, what do you think? I'm like, it's really good. And they're like, no, you're just saying that. It's like, no, I would pay for them. And if I say I would pay for them, that means they're good. that would bounce back and forth from like often from gel polish to long nails or no Not nails really. To, really I would have them go short you know clients that went short in the summer but that's about it like I didn't really have like the oh I want them long now I just want gel polish every once in a while you'd get someone that's like oh I need to take them off for a while I can't afford it I think they were expecting me to say, oh, don't worry about it. I'm like, okay, yeah, we can take them off. <laughs> <laughs> Nails are a luxury, right? If you can't afford it, then you can't afford it. It's all good. We're going to pop a little stain resistant in this. Actually, let me see this real quick. That was our top. So what is it that you're working on? Right now I'm working on your shape. Let's make sure they're even before I do what I'm going to do next. These are gonna pop a little stain resistant into that little divot. And that's just a cheater's method. That way it's nice and smooth there when I go over it with the top coat and the glitter. Okay, go in. Let's get rid of this thing. Oh, thank the Lord. <laughs> and let's get you finished out. We are going to use, I didn't really want to use the white white. I thought we kind of talked about using the sheer white, which I'm really in love with right now. I think it's just so pretty over, over, um, the pink. So. I'm going to put that protein bond down. So we're going to do some gel polish and some glitter press. This way she doesn't, oh, sorry. Thank you, Steph, for keeping me on film. And I think your hangnail, I don't think it needs to be clipped. It's just a little, little cut. I think we're good. So let's figure out what we're doing. Let's put some glitter. Put this I'm gonna do in the sheer white 101. Thank you, Steph. And let's do this one in the sheet of white. And let's see. Go ahead and do sheer white on this one too. In the light, ma'am. Next. Dust you off. This is a little sticky. Just rough it up a little bit so we have texture. 
texture to it so we don't have any problems with the product sticking. I'll check the shape on that one one last time. We're good. Okay. Sorry. There we go. Protein bond. We don't want to oversaturate with protein bond even at this step because if you like glob a ton of it on, you're going to run into probably chipping issues. You know, protein bond is a good thing, but too much protein bond is not a good thing. Let's see. I think we'll leave that as is. I think we'll do this one. This one, let's do this one. I feel like I found making it up as I go can be a time saver too. Definitely, because if you overthink it, yeah. you'll probably end up changing it anyway. And um, plus you're trying to get it exact. Guys, don't freak out that that little hole's there. It's covered, mm. it's nice and covered now. So again, there's things that happen that I don't have to overthink like the product's nice and tight on there. I'm gonna just do our little glitter fade up. This one, I think we'll do a full glitter press. Just going back and forth to that jar. And this was a premix glitter you had? So for me, there's certain colors that I love to use. And this is one of them. It's pretty much all of our iridescents in a mix. So I would always have this on my wall. It would never really be a custom mix. It would only cost the client $5. Things that you know that you're going to be using all the time, just have it, have it ready. Um, that's one that I used constantly because you can change it up with liquid art. You can add it to mixes. It just makes everything pop. So someone is really trying to get a hold of me. Mm -hmm. That's funny. Yeah. I think that's the third FaceTime. And, and, and literally no one, no one FaceTimes me <laughs> except Habib. Okay. Let's get this on. I did the ones that didn't have glitter first. That way I don't spread it. I always recommend having two, but I could not find my other one, so we're gonna be kind of stuck with this bottle. There's a bunch of them on the other desk. Is there? Mm -hmm. Cool. 60 seconds. I'm just gonna clean the brush off really nicely and try to hope that works. Just do a little fade on this one and we'll cover this one completely what's the matter Gucci <laughs> just like you're taking too long you need to give me back my mom <laughs> and for one on this one she doesn't understand the quiet on set sign <laughs> If, mm. if only we had one. <laughs> we do not. Is there... You want to grab that for me real quick? Mm -hmm. She's going to get maybe the other ones that aren't full of glitter. Clean this off while she's gone. Thank you, ma'am. Helpful client. Helpful client. I love it. Thank you. So let's get back on screen. Get ah, much better. I hate it when there's a random piece of glitter just staring at you at the end. There's just nothing you can it's do like, about it either. It's like, screw you. Mm -hmm. Glitter is for life. Ugh, glitter is everywhere. Choice of being a nail tech, glitter and Choice filing dust. Being a nail tech, for sure. Put a good amount on the glitter ones. Some people like to coat them twice. I 
It just depends. If I feel like I didn't get it good enough, I'll coat it twice. But if I can get a good amount on there, I don't worry about it. So I'll go through just a couple more times there. That's nice and smooth. Ooh, I like these. Go ahead and go in. I like your surprise afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. There are times. You're like, hmm. And your client's like, I think it's because it's your own nails, right? Yeah. You sit there and you pick it apart and your client's like, I love them. And you're like, oh God, I'm not sure about that one. I always liked them when they came back. I think I kind of would forget about them after staring at them for an hour. You're like kind of done with them, I think. I, yeah, I think you're over it. Let's get to oil on these ones. Okay, waiting on the other one. Kind of throw some things away in the process. Keep myself busy or I won't. I'll try to get the, the hand before it's time. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Before timers. <laughs> I was probably curing things for like 20 seconds thinking, oh, that's a two minutes. It's, it's got to be two minutes. It's fine. Mm -hmm. It's fine. You're good. Dispersion, sticky layer, inhibition, inhibition, <laughs> whatever you like to call it, it's got to go. Check our sides. Cool. That's oil. And you are done. My favorite. Tracy, I noticed you had a little issue during this set. <laughs> One? <laughs> For a few. I, I, just, I don't know what was going on today. No, but it was awesome that you broke, like as you're pulling the form off that nail, that it, you just broke. I broke it, I put, stuck my finger, I'm off, I'm like totally <laughs> offset because the nails on one, I'm gonna blame that, I'm, I, it, blame it's, that. it couldn't be me. I stuck my finger in I saw. two different nails. I know, I was right there. It was, it was Today, people. But but the reason why I love that is because that is real life. That's why we do real time is because we, we want to show like what do you do in those situations, yeah. right? Yeah. And uh, the way that you handled it is like no big deal. Just put another form on, go to town, and off you go. And I think that's good for you to see, especially if you are trying to improve your time. Those are gems, like the errors and mistakes that happened within the hour that Tracy booked, that's the gold. And how she handled it, how she moved on, and still got it done in like 50, I forgot the time. 56? I think it was like 56, 56? and change. Yeah. Is amazing. Gives you time to use the bathroom, have a drink. Just pay me. <laughs> pay me and go. Sure, employee, yeah. We'll see you next time on Real Time. <laughs>